And with the fear and uncertainty and just flat out weirdness of these past 15 months, I found myself dwelling more on memories than is typical for me. And so a few months into it, I began to write a journal simply called What I Am Remembering Today. I suppose I thought that in the future, my kids might get something out of it, memories of their mom, which would most certainly include their mom's memories of them. Or maybe I hoped that it would ground me somehow, remind me that this pandemic is temporary. So what I was remembering last weekend, maybe because things are beginning to open up and I feel more free to move more freely about, or maybe because my grandson will be able to return to a classroom in a couple of months, was my walk to school beginning in the first grade throughout my elementary school years. I would kiss my mom goodbye, promise again that I would look both ways before crossing the street, and promise again that I would never talk to a stranger or believe anything that a stranger told me, and begin my journey down Wabasa Way and down Cañada Boulevard to Verdugo Woodlands Elementary School. And while walking down Wabasso, I would pass what I remember as a crumbly block wall that looked older to me than Glendale itself, behind which were pomegranate trees, six or seven or eight of them, their lower branches resting and reaching over the wall. So on the sidewalk, there seemed always the bright red spatter of broken pomegranates and the random mess of seeds and pomegranate flesh and slippery syrupy juice. And so I would walk carefully down this portion of the sidewalk, trying to avoid the mess of it as much as possible. And one afternoon on my walk home from school, just before reaching the treacherous pomegranate field, I hesitated. I don't remember why. There was some undeveloped land there, so maybe I, for the first time, noticed the weeds and tall bushes and I wanted to explore it. In any case, I crept sideways through it and discovered what I would thereafter call my tree. It was a sycamore, which I knew because we had one in our front yard, but this one had somehow failed to heed its call as a tree. It had grown horizontally, not vertically, as trees are supposed to do, which is why I couldn't see it from the sidewalk. And so I sat upon it and did nothing at all except take in what had been hidden and listen to a stillness that seemed to squash the sounds of the busy street just beyond it. And I let my mind just go where it would, but I felt warmed and welcomed. The horizontal reach of that tree's trunk, irresistible to any six-year-old child in any case, but it seemed more than that to me. And so it was that most days I visited my tree. Now, in the seventh grade, we moved to a new home in an area where houses were being built phase by phase in what had before been green and brown hillsides, always in motion, it seemed, with rabbit and deer and coyote and snakes and tiny yellow and purple and orange flowers blooming and dying and blooming again. And in the move, I forgot about my tree. But one day, while exploring the lots that had been carved and shaped in what was to become the neighborhood around our new home, I wandered onto one with a view east and north and south. Making my way to its east-facing edge, I sat a while on the rocky dirt, and I felt warmed and welcomed. And I remembered my tree and how I felt warmed and welcomed by her too. So a little bit like Abraham placing rocks as an altar at the Oak of Mora, or Jacob wrestling with God and naming the place of it the face of God, perhaps though I did not yet know these stories, I inelegantly named the new place I had found Poindexter. Now, most days I made my way there simply to breathe in a way not possible for me anywhere else. In time, though, a house was built there, and a year or so passed until one day I wandered up the steep slope which rose behind my backyard on the other side of a concrete wall. And to get up the slope, I had to use the long, wide grasses that covered the hill like ropes, and they made long, thin cuts in my hands that I would only notice later. But once near the top of the slope and taking a seat there, my every muscle and tendon relaxed. My bones themselves relaxed. My heart beat slower. I felt quieter. And I would make my way up there in the late afternoon, mostly, and feel the sun disappear behind me, 
but everything seemed more hopeful than it did when I was anywhere else. Now, it would be tempting for me to call these places of mine thin places, but that has kind of a universal sound to it, even though I know thin places can be very individual, which doesn't mean that a thin place for me cannot also be a thin place for you, just that my thin place doesn't need to be yours. God cannot be contained. God can certainly not be commanded to reside here or there, this time or that, bought, paid for, or flattered. Sacred places, thin places, places of rest for the soul are given, and they might be taken from us, often are. Maybe some should be, maybe some are that shouldn't be, but God is not taken from us, ever. God is on the move, and everywhere at once, in the regular and the normal, the uncertain, the fragile, the humble, the privileged, the mundane, or the bleeding. God has been in a bush, a wind, near an oak, on a mountain, in fire, in breath, on the road, in a desert, in a sea, in the stars, in a dream, in a womb, on a cross, in a tomb. Now John found a thin place at the River Jordan where he baptized people from the whole Judean countryside. Mother Teresa found a thin place in the slums of Calcutta. Thomas Merton found a thin place on a city sidewalk crowded with people, their faces shining like the sun. Constance found it in a city deserted by all but those who were dying of yellow fever. John of the Cross found it in prison. I found my fourth thin place here at St. Mark's nearly 25 years ago, first in our garden, then in the mass. For the past 15 months, this thin place has seemed hidden from me, but only hidden, not gone. And so how grateful I am that it is being returned now slowly, still differently, but not less, as we gather here once again in person to give glory to God and Christ. Mm -hmm.